Swashbucklers, you're listening to Under the Crossbones, episode number 81. My name is Phil Johnson, and I am your host for the show. Thank you once again for tuning in. Thank you for telling your friends. We're going to talk about that in a second. First, fun fact about the number 81 for episode number 81. The number 81, how many times can I say the number 81? The number 81 is the symbolic number of the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club because H and A are the eighth and first numbers of the alphabet, respectively. Uh, so 81, H, A, Hells Angels. Amazing. Who knew that? I uh, they, We still have a few Hells Angels around here in, uh, in uh, San Jose, California. They actually started here in the Bay Area, and um, apparently my dad sold them lots of furniture back in the day. So uh, there's that. 81 for the Hells Angels. So my guest on the show today is Brian Fields of the Pirates of Emerson, and I've been trying to get Brian on the show for quite a while now. Uh, he's a tough guy to nail down, but the Pirates of Emerson is a uh, a haunt, as they call it in the industry. It's a haunted house uh, done around Halloween time. Uh, it's here in the Bay Area, and it is one of the best. I have uh, I went years ago, and it scared the heck out of me, and uh, it's really cool, and it's all pirate-themed, a pirate-themed haunted house, right? So if you are here in the Bay Area, first of all, you have to go if you haven't already. Certainly, if you've been to, you know, our Pirate Festival in Vallejo, uh, then you've probably been to Pirates of Emerson. But if you have not gone, gone, you should go this coming October when they open up. And uh, if you are out of the Bay Area uh, and happen to be coming here, go. Uh, and it may even be a trip. If you're a haunt person, this is a good one and uh, may even be worth a trip into the Bay Area uh, where you can check it out. Uh, it's a really good one, and it's Pirates, and it's scary, and it's super great. So we're going to talk to Brian about how how, how that all got started. It's a pretty great story. And uh, it started with, he was uh, they were a Halloween house on their block, right? I was a Halloween house on our block. We used to go out and uh, and decorate the yard. We, we spent three, four months before Halloween, my brother and I, making stuff for Halloween. That's how into it we were. And, uh, and then Halloween night, we would be out there just scaring the heck out of people it was great. And I, of course, was often dressed as a pirate. And uh, it was great, great fun. Uh, and then we did not do it anymore eventually later on. And Brian kept doing it and making it bigger and going bigger and doing it. And that's his business now. And it's really great. So we're going to hear that whole story from him coming up uh, in, a, in a few minutes here. And uh, it's really great. Plus, we got to do it in person, uh, which means the sound is impeccable and the discussion is wonderful. So I, I always like when we get to do it in person. So here's here's the thing podcasting you get to listen to this show for free which is awesome right? podcasts are free and other things hbo netflix hulu plus amazon prime those all cost money and uh so podcasts are free and a lot of you this is your first podcast you're listening to which i appreciate i've gotten notes from you uh, who said you're, you're discovering podcasting through under the crossbones and a lot of people out there don't know what podcasting is yet. So here's a thing that the podcasting community here is doing during the month of March, okay? I want you to go find someone you care about uh, or someone you don't care about, someone you hate. Maybe someone you, or you're just standing in line for a cup of coffee and there's a dude next to you who looks like you could talk to him. And I want you to tell them about podcasts. Find out if they listen to podcasts. Tell them about the podcasts you listen to, right? And uh, you can suggest under the crossbones, that would be nice of you, or suggest someone else's podcast, right? But tell them about podcasting, ask them if they know about it, and that would make you awesome. Uh, and that helps us get the word out. But here's what I want you to do when you're sharing online, when you're sharing uh, under the crossbones online or any other podcast that you're listening to, uh, use two hashtags, okay? Uh, the first one is tripod, hashtag tripod. That's try, T R Y pod, as in try a podcast, right? Tripod. And then use hashtag UTC pod, uh, and that tags uh, under the crossbones, uh, which is uh, was tough to figure out. Like hashtag just UTC was soccer, uh, hashtag crossbones was all sorts of random piratey stuff. Uh, so UT, hashtag UTC pod, that will tag under the crossbones. All right. Let's, I talked all over the place on that one. So tell a friend about podcasting, find out what they listen to, tell them what you listen to. And when you're sharing podcasts online, use hashtag tripod and hashtag UTC pod uh, when you're sharing under the crossbones. Now, if you don't know about other podcasts, if this is your first one that you're listening to, there are lots of them out there. 
thousands and thousands. But here's some you might try out. There's the History of Pirates podcast. There's the Pirate History podcast. Yes, those are two different shows, uh, and uh, they're both great. There's Scoundrels In, which you may know about. Uh, they uh, podcast their show as well. There's the Dork Forest, which is Jackie Cation's podcast. A very fun show about dorkdoms. You can hear me on there talking about uh, pirates, of course. There's Mousestalgia, which is a great Disney podcast. What's Up Doc, which is a killer documentary about a killer podcast about documentaries. Always great. There's the Jackie and Lori show, which is uh, uh, two comedians uh, talking it out uh, about lady comedy. And uh, it's really great. Uh, it's uh, Jackie Cation and Lori Kilmartin, both very funny. Uh, there's uh, Barrel Proof Comedy. If you like your liquor. Barrel Proof Comedy is a comedy podcast about booze, all sorts of booze, uh, and those guys are great too. So that's the uh, that's the podcast pitch, all right? Okay, cool. We did that. Thank you for all the birthday greetings. You guys sent me birthday greetings and things like that. I appreciate that very much. I had a wonderful birthday. I spent it in my recording studio recording, and uh, I will let you hear what I was recording very soon, but I will tell you that it is an, arrange- it is an arrangement of a cover song that I dreamt. I had it in a dream. I heard it in a dream. And I woke up and I was like, yeah, I guess I'll do that. So that'll be coming up uh, in a couple weeks. Uh, when I finish that, uh, I got a pirate hat for my birthday. I didn't own a pirate hat before. Uh, now I own a pirate hat that I will wear to the festivals. And it's a nice one. I'll put a picture of it on the uh, the show notes. Uh, show notes for this show, by the way, under the crossbones.com slash 081, of course. And uh, you can see my new pirate hat. Congratulations to Donna Lovejoy. Donna won the treasure box from the treasure chest uh, pirate uh, pa- treasure pet pa- uh, my mouth not working the treasure chest prize pack from Parada clothing man there's a lot of peas in there that are probably popping all over the uh the recording of this but that's cool so donna lovejoy won that uh won the prize pack congratulations to her uh i'll try and do more contests you guys were into it this time so that's cool uh let's see uh my new single is out it's called I Want to Rock Socially Responsibly, and it's really great. It's really fun. Uh, it's all over the place. iTunes, uh, it's on Spotify, it's on any of the streaming, downloady, anywhere you want to get it, it's there. So just look up Phil Johnson and Roadside Attraction, uh, or put I Want to Rock Socially Responsibly in there, and you will uh, be able to get it. I'll, and of course, I'll put it in the show notes too. I also put out a lyric video for it, which is uh, super fun. Uh, where you can, you can catch all the lyrics, but there's tons of visual jokes that I throw in there as well. So I'll put that in the um, in the show notes under the crossbones.com slash 081. So uh, I'm preparing to go to London. London is coming up quickly. We're actually leaving uh, as you're listening to this. <laughs> We're leaving on the 7th uh, with a 6 o'clock flight. We will arrive there at 8 o'clock. Uh, and uh, so it's going to be uh, enjoyable. We're going to do lots of uh, history, museum-y things. We're going to do all the touristy stuff because we've never been to London before. Uh, so it's going to be great. I am doing a show while I'm there, though. You can catch me if you're in London. Um, Thursday, March 16th, I will be at Monkey Business at the Camden Eye in London. That's going to be lots of fun. Uh, and then when I get back, lots of shows then. Tuesday, the 21st of March, O'Malley's in Mountain View, California for a quickie set. Wednesday, March the 22nd, headlining at the 6th Street Playhouse in Santa Rosa, California. Thursday, March the 23rd, headlining at the office in Ukiah, California. Friday, March the 24th, headlining at Spice Monkey in Oakland, California. And Sunday, March the 26th, headlining at the Crow's Nest in Santa Cruz, California. Yeah. Oh, speaking of Santa Cruz, I went and saw Lyrics Born, one of my favorite rappers, uh, on Friday night uh, for as part of my birthday gift to myself. So fun. If you've not listened to Lyrics Born before, uh, even if you don't like hip-hop, listen to Lyrics Born. I think you'll dig it. It's funky, man. Super funky. Great stuff. Uh, more shows. Uh, next month in April, I'll be in Iowa. I'll be in Wisconsin. I'll be in Minnesota. I've got a few California dates, so lots of traveling coming up in April. If you want to find out all those tour dates, go to underthecrossbones.com. Click on the tour dates button, and it'll show you where I'm going to be. If you're enjoying the show, and I hope you are, come join us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash underthecrossbones. Twitter dot com slash under crossbones no the in that one and uh, make sure you're subscribed at your favorite podcasty type place itunes stitcher slacker iHeartRadio, google play it's all there it's all there and uh if you want to help support the show that would be very nice of you go to under the crossbones.com slash support there's a little paypal box there you can drop a donation whatever you like in the box there's an amazon banner click that amazon banner anytime you're going to amazon to buy yourself something nice and amazon kicks me back a few a few uh pesos uh 
it's just only worth a few pesos. <laughs> but it does help, so do that. And if you want to be a sponsor of the show, that's simple, cheap, and easy. Uh, and you can contact me through the support page to get that done. All right. Boy, that was a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff in there today. So we are going to get to the interview. All right, you're going to dig this one. This is Brian Fields from Pirates of Emerson. Enjoy. So uh, 25 years of Pirates of Emerson. I went to Pirates of Emerson uh, a couple of times like years ago, and it scared the crap out of me. Uh, was it in the fairgrounds or was it down in Fremont? It was in Fremont. That's uh, how long ago it was. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, that's a few years back. We've grown up since then. Yes, I know, I know. And uh, I, I'm at the point now where I don't uh, generally uh, pay to be scared that much. So, uh, But I think I'm going to have to come and see it this year again. Well, I think what makes this a little bit uh, unique other than ha- other haunted houses is that you don't have to come down there and just be scared. We have movies and games and mazes and things that are uh, kind of entertaining for the entire family. So nice. that makes it good, you know. That's cool. So... Uh, before we get too deep into it, so uh, Pirates of Emerson is a a haunt, as it's called in the industry these days. Correct, right? correct. So, and we, it's, it's we actually call ourselves a haunted themed park with okay. a D on the end, not theme, but right. themed. <laughs> We're themed of pirates, you know. So yeah. Okay, cool. So how did uh, what is it? In, what does it consist of now? I know it's huge now. It, well, right now we're at the Alameda County Fairgrounds. We take up about six acres. There's uh, five different haunted houses. Again, like I said, some mazes, games, and movies, and stage entertainment, all kinds of stuff going on. You can come out there and actually spend the whole evening with your family or your friends or whatever and, and enjoy the whole, you know, that's what makes it different than the other haunts. You just don't go to the mall and go in the haunted house and come out in the mall again. You come out and you're in, <laughs> you're in the atmosphere still, you know? Uh, every trip to the mall is yeah, uh, scary. It, it is. So, uh, how long have you been involved with it? The whole twenty five years? Or? Yeah, absolutely. We started it in our. Uh, we started it as a as a party kind of in the backyard with some friends, uh-huh. scaring the neighborhood kids. It was a keg and some neighbor and some friends, and we scared. We just we had people just going down the side part of the house. They didn't okay. go in the backyard or anything, just a side yard. And, uh-huh. and it was a good turnout. So. We, we kept it going. You know, the theme got so, uh, we, we had that pirate theme going and we had some pirate stuff from the year before. So we just kept that going for the next year. Okay. And then, and kind of went, and then the next year and then the haunt got bigger and bigger. We actually had people start going into the backyard and uh-huh. going over swimming pool with a bridge and people nice. jumping out of the swimming pool and things like that. <laughs> it turned into being something really crazy. Actually, we, uh, we were, on Emerson Street, that's where the Pirates oh, okay. of Emerson. I was going to ask you, yeah. yeah okay. It started just because we were from Emerson, and we were the very last house in the end of the court. So that if you were to come on, a, we we're only open Halloween weekends. Okay. You come down, you trick or treat down one side, you uh-huh. go to the haunted house, you trick or treat out the other. So the whole neighborhood was into it. Actually, people had to disclose that when they were selling their home, is that we oh had that, the haunted house next door. Yeah, How funny. So, <laughs> it, it, it turned into something huge. So we, we started collecting uh, food. We didn't ever charge any admission, but we did uh-huh. start charging uh, um, canned food admission and okay. donating it all to the Tri-City Homeless Shelter. Uh-huh. Um, like 15 tons of food over the seven years that we were in our yard. That's wow. pretty big. Yeah. That's crazy. So at what point do you, I mean, because I, I decorated the, the crap out of my house when I was a kid for Halloween. That was a big thing for us. And we yeah. s- stand out there and scare people. Do it. Oh, yeah. Very much like what you were doing. At what point did you decide, okay, this could be something bigger. Let's go find another place to do it. Well, let me go. Let me let me side note that. Sure. I too went back and and, and, and like everybody growing up is, is a little bit different. I think that years ago, was, you know, trick or treating was a lot different. There was yeah. just like hundreds of kids out on the street and right. everybody had to go for the coolest costumes it's not it's not kind of the same atmosphere anymore really is but it? yeah but back then i remember this lady i went up on her porch and she had this cauldron stirring this brew you know and it was uh-huh. a witch and you had to reach in and grab the candy and i was scared to death of this lady <laughs> I, I mean i'm talking about this shit 40 years later yeah. here i am talking about it right you know and i uh and 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 i swear even after halloween was over i wouldn't walk by that lady's house man she was freaking me out really you know? that's yeah. funny so I, I never even went back by there and uh now um what was your question? So w- w- at what point did you say, okay, let's take it out of the backyard and let's put it somewhere else and let's – I don't know if it, you were planning yeah. on it being a business or you are just planning no. on t- taking it bigger. We were kind of forced into that by the city. We were uh, oh. we were shut down by the city of Fremont came by. We had some people come by and say that uh, it's too big. We had uh-huh. literally 3,000 people in two nights wow. in our yard, you know, <laughs> so that's a, that's a big party. And the city came by and said, you guys can't do this anymore. Um, we were actually running – extension cords over the fences from the neighbor's houses because we were oh my gosh one guy's job was to sit by the breaker box and just pop the breakers back because <laughs> they're just popping them right and left you know so the city took notice of that actually and then we shut us down so we either had to quit doing it or uh or do it 
commercial or professional right. uh-huh. or however you want to say it, you know. Yeah. So that that kind of drew the line for us. And we kind of went out and started looking around and realized that, that buildings were un, undoable in the Bay Area for us, you know, especially right. if you're only open a, a couple week like weekends in a year, sure. you know, yeah. it's not. So we decided to look for some place to put up a tent. Right. And then that's where we ended up. That space that you probably went to in yes. Fremont on Warm Springs and Grimmer. Yep. Uh-huh. Yeah. You know, uh, Grimmer, perfect yeah. place for it. it. Well, you know, yeah. it's a lot, it's a lot harder to tell people though that I'm on uh, the corner of Warm Springs and Grimmer behind the old Numi plant where they fly remote right. control airplanes. You know, it's easier to say I'm at the Alameda County Fairgrounds. Yeah. Yeah. yeah certainly. You certainly. Yeah. The, for, for those listening all over the world, uh, the Numi plant is where they make Tesla cars now. And correct, you guys are correct. behind that. Yeah. Actually, I worked at Numi for 20 plus years, 21 okay. years when that shut down, actually. And then in that, that same time that Numi shut down, is when I went out and did, I just did pirates professionally, oh, okay. you might yeah. want to say, you know. Yeah. I mean, my parents are involved. My parents, Patty and Carl Fields, both. This nice. is their yard that we started it in. Okay. And today they are still a huge, huge part of designing That's and so operating great. the entire thing. Um, so what was it about uh, pirates at the beginning? Why did you Why did you do pirates? Was it just the stuff you happen to have laying well, you around? Know what? I'm going to say, honestly, we started out as Haunters, we were haunters, sure. and then it, and then yeah. with the pirate flair, you know, uh-huh. and then we just kind of roll with that, you know, and and uh, everybody loves Pirates of the Caribbean, you know, right. and, and that movie kind of was just starting to come out. Actually, we were rolling a couple of years into it when that movie came out, sure, yeah, and we were invited to go out to a lot of theaters and pass our brochures uh-huh. and things. So it actually, and I know that they probably don't let you go as a Good dressed time. character anymore into those movie right. theaters, <laughs> yeah. right? You know, but. <laughs> At the time, it was good, yeah, and we passed out lots, and then we blew up that year. So thank you, Johnny Depp. There you go. Yeah, you there's know. a lot of people involved with this you show bet. that thank you, Johnny Depp. You <laughs> bet. I mean, as crazy as we look, we're these crazy zombie pirates with these you know, outfits and makeup and uh-huh. green crazy eyes and all this, but... Everybody walks up and says, Johnny Depp. I just do not get it, you know? When you look nothing alike, I say, yeah, you'll find no Mickey Mouse ears on me. Love right, you know? yeah, nice. <laughs> so, I mean, because when I first heard about it, because I heard about it real early on, and I was like, oh, Haunted House. It's, I'd never seen a pirate-themed Haunted House before, and I thought that was a really interesting angle on the whole thing. Um, plus, you guys are one of the only... Uh, like independent haunts around that isn't connected to a theme park of some sort uh, or something like that. Cause yeah. I don't see them a lot around here. You guys are the big one. You know, there's a, there's a, there's a couple of them around the Bay area, but they're huge on the East coast. The East coast has oh, lots of haunted houses. Yeah. Okay. Here you go back there. I, 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 I can't explain it, but you know, they stand out in the snow and the rain to go <laughs> to their haunted houses over there. I mean, the rain's here and people don't want to get out of their cars. Right. You know? Yeah. So I don't, yeah, so I was saying you guys are like the big – you guys are the big haunt around here. There's yeah. not too many of them that aren't – because, I mean, uh, the, especially like the um, the theme parks will do stuff. Great America does stuff. Knott's does stuff. Disney does stuff, sort of. Uh, you know, uh, Universal certainly is big for theirs. You know, but up here in Northern California, you guys are you guys are kind of it. Yeah, again, there's not there's – you're right. There's not a lot. There's maybe less than a half dozen of them within a 100-mile radius here. Yeah. And so there's not a lot to, to choose from. But we do have a really good show – and um, yeah, okay, we started our show one, when we started it. It was just one big haunted house, Pirates of Emerson, right? And um, the Travel Channel came in and oh. did a show on the top thirteen haunted houses in America, uh-huh. and we were one of them. Nice. So that played, and today it still plays on the Travel Channel every October, which is kind of crazy. That's they still great. Play it. But um, Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk saw that. And said, oh, really? hey, you guys are in our backyard. Why don't you come over here and talk to us? So we went over there and uh, talked to them and ended up doing 300 houses right on the beach for those guys. Oh, nice. So Pirates of Emerson and Santa Cruz Boardwalk. But to do that, I had to split my stuff. I didn't have enough stuff to do this big haunted house here right. in Fremont and Santa Cruz. So I came up with this idea, or let me say we came up, my my parents and I, Patty and Carl, and we came up with this idea to... Uh, to split up the haunts uh-huh. into sections, and we kind of leased out the area. So we already had oh, the okay. spot. I had the insurance. I've got the tan up. I got everything, and then right. I just split it up into twelve hundred square foot sections. And I had home haunters from one from San Jose, another uh-huh. guy from Milpitas area here actually nice. came up and helped us out, and 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 they were able to open up a commercial haunt per se, uh-huh. a yard hunter able to go into commercial without all of the uh-huh. the hubbub and, and bureaucracy that goes along with it. You know? Oh, nice. Yeah, I imagine it's got to be a giant hassle to oh, put yeah, something it, like that it, together. Well, it, it was at the time, you know, and now that we're, we're in it and we, we know what to do, now it's a lot easier. But sure. still, you go through all that, that you would do for any other business, you know, it's, it's you're paying your taxes and you're, you're getting permits and you're right. getting inspections from the city and fire departments and, you know, so it's, it's, 
It's turned into a huge deal. Yeah, oh, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, when you're when you're in season, when you're in October and you're in season, how many people are involved with the thing? Um, well, to build up to the season, there is about six, maybe eight of us total that that build it all out. And wow. we start building in August. We uh-huh. build it August, September. We okay. run in October and tear it down November. And uh, so there's about six or eight of us that build it. And then there's uh, 60 to 70 people that help run it. That's costume characters uh-huh. and things. And, and then we have uh, uh, about... Probably about four people that help tear it down. You know, everybody's wow. tired. At that, that is time. an amazingly small crew for the size of that project. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. it is, and I think that people are, uh, don't understand that when they come in either. I think that people think of it as a, 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 a backed by a great America right. or a Marine right. World type atmosphere because yeah. we are in the fairgrounds and we are a big. I mean, it, it's sixteen fifty foot semi trailers full of stuff. Now. Yeah, yeah. Sixteen trailers takes us a week just to unload it all. You know, it's like it's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. amazing. That's that's got to be a ton of work. So, did you have um, any sort of background in? Because I mean, the special effects and things that you guys do are great. The makeup is fantastic. The costumes are fantastic. Who on the team or you did had some sort of background in that, or was it just trial and error all the way? Well, I, you know, I'm, I'm gonna give uh, I'm gonna give all that credit to my mom. You know, my mom started from when I was a little kid. My mom always made our costumes. She made little haunted houses in the basement, and the neighborhood kids would all come through, and we'd go really? and crawl on the ground, and uh-huh. you know, and touch the eyeballs and the spaghetti brains, sure, and all, yeah. you know, and and that was always my mom that that had that creative to her. She, I think that you know, my at the beginning, my dad. Wasn't even like a huge fan of it, you know. Uh-huh. I was like, oh, I got to make this mess in the yard <laughs> right. again, you know. But that, 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 that sooner when when I, my dad really got on board with uh-huh. it, and he's a, a big part of it too. But I'm going to give the, the credit to my mom for that, you know. And then we kind of just uh, we just kind of took it what she had, you uh-huh. know, and grabbed a hold of little pieces here and there. So I, I'm I'm real creative in my own way, uh-huh. and my dad's creative in his own way, and you know. But but I'm it. It all comes back to my mom. She did it. She's the one that started all that, and then. Um, they have these big uh, haunt conventions on the East Coast every year, uh-huh. um, and they've been in Chicago. Now they're in St. Louis, but we went to it last year. And, and you, you go there, and you can't help but but come up with new ideas and be creative. Uh-huh. There's yeah. so many cool things out there uh-huh. that, that are available that that are just. Uh, Mind-boggling. I'm glad I don't have to think of them. All I'm going to do is put them into use. You know, it's like it's really cool. So when you when you buy something sort of quote unquote off the shelf like that, do you customize it into a pirate thing for for your use? Well, sometimes we do. Okay, so let's go. Let's go back to the pirate theme. When when we moved over there to um to Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk and uh-huh. split up our our stuff, I didn't have enough to do both of them. So when we split up and did that, mm-hmm. I had. Five, six different haunted houses going on. So when people came, instead of doing one big Pirates of Emerson haunted house, they had six haunted houses with the Pirates of Emerson as well. Right. And then uh, next year, I didn't do Santa Cruz Boardwalk. They invited us back, but it was really hard for us to to separate like that. It was a, and too much competition for their haunted castle. Yeah, is, yeah, 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 yeah. The haunted castle. <laughs> you know that thing has been there forever. Three tickets of disaster. They, um, <laughs> they, they, um, when we actually had all those multiple haunted houses there. The next year we came back and we just did one big haunted house of Pirates of Emerson again. And everybody's uh-huh. like, what happened to all the haunted houses? Oh, okay. You know, so that gave us the idea that after that, the following year, that we broke it up and did our own haunted houses uh-huh. and, and different themes to all the haunted houses. So right. it, it's there is the, the main haunt itself, uh, uh-huh. 2,500 square foot haunted houses, Pirates of Emerson. And then we have the other haunted houses are all a little bit smaller, but they're all... Uh, Different themes every and year. What are those themed to? The well, other four? different years. Every oh, year change. Different. Yeah, okay. Pirates of Ember is the only one that stays the same name, uh-huh. although it's a different change of a different walk. We change it every year. I don't. I don't think I can keep it the same way if I wanted to. You know, yeah, because yeah. it comes out in a in a big puzzle, and you just gotta <laughs> pick pieces and put it together. But um, yeah, I, I don't. Uh, what, what what themes have you used in the past for the other um, ones? Uh, well, um, last year, for instance, we had a, we had a hospital theme. Um, we had. Uh, a doll theme. We had a burnt Christmas. Uh, you know, so everything was burned up inside the inside the haunts. Um, we had. I can't. I can't even think of them. There were so many yeah. of them. I saw every year they changed. So we've literally had probably fifty different themes yeah. over the year, and it's hard to come up with creative new ones every year. But this Certainly. year we're going to do a, a barnyard theme. Okay, it's going to be a farm theme, you know. <laughs> and then uh, we're going to we'll do the Pirates of Emerson as well. We're going to have a 
a crazy clown, and we're doing a corn maze again this year. In the past, we've done some corn mazes, uh-huh. and we're going to do another corn maze this year as That's well. That's cool. That's it's, cool. Yeah, Those are always, always popular. Yeah, yeah it, you know, it's great for the city folk around here. These, these city folk don't right. do corn, you know. So. Oh, certainly. And I mean, I see those, like when I travel through the Midwest in the fall, I see there's corn mazes every five feet out there. And big ones. Yeah, I mean, they huge can get lost out there for hours. You yeah. Know, so. And we just, we just not something we have here very yeah. much. So no, that, no, no. The drought, cool. water, you know, people complain when we start doing our water in the corn. You know, <laughs> they're like, what is going on? I guess we won't have that problem this year. I could probably use all the water I want. That's right. Yeah. We're finally getting some rain. It's a little yeah, better out here. That's, uh, that's amazing. That's so good. I, I'm still blown away by the small amount of people you have. Uh, putting all that together because it's such an immense project. Do you have any like um, any particular special effects people that are involved who that's their thing? Um, no, not anybody in particular. Wow. Like I said, I, I, um, I handle most all the building. I design it and do all the layout and the, the uh-huh. building of it. My mom is in charge of most of all the, the, uh, the, the interior decorating uh-huh. and putting all the uh, – painting everything out and then my dad does a lot of the electrical uh-huh. and and you know all the alarms and all these kind of things the registers mm-hmm. so we all have our thing and each one of us has a little somebody that helps us do our thing okay you know then that's again that's why it takes us so long it takes us you know eight weeks seven eight weeks to build it out sure yeah now yeah. i know a lot of other haunted houses don't have that that time to do it i mm-hmm. mean if we had to we had more people, we could do it in less time, obviously, but right. we have the time to do it, so yeah. we like to do it right, yeah. you know? <laughs> That's great. It's such a fascinating experience, and I definitely need to go again, because every year I go, oh, man, I got to go to that, and then I'm always, because I'm, I'm booked every weekend doing shows, cause, and so I miss a lot of the times when you guys are open. So, you, I mean, you generally are open, like, what, Thursday through sunday Yeah, Thursday yeah. through Sunday is pretty much uh, what our MO has been. Uh, last year we closed a uh, night or two because of rain, and and again mm. this is like uh, I think in our twenty five year history of doing this, uh-huh. I've closed twice ever because of rain, and <laughs> two of them were last year. Yeah. You Welcome know, to California. Co- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he can plan for that, right? Yeah. So, so um, yeah, we're open um, this year. I believe we'll be open like twenty one days total. Nice. Uh, uh, start out a little bit earlier and. Work out some of the bugs, you might uh-huh. say. You yeah, know? sure. And, yeah. And, and then by the end of the show, you were, you were doing a, a great show. We're one of the, we are the best in the Bay Area that I've seen, you know. And I've Absolutely, actually gone yeah. out to some other haunts, and I and they don't even compare to what we're doing right now. So yeah, yeah. I'm I'm excited about that. I, I think that uh, our uniqueness, having that pirate theme, helps us a lot to go out and promote too, because sure. we have some really good pirates that go out. If you get a chance, you can go online and uh-huh. see our, our characters. But oh, yeah. we have a, a, a good group. Actually, last year we went down to, um, we try to go to Comic Con every year, but you know, it's uh, so hard to get those tickets right. for that, you know? So yeah. we went to WonderCon last year. We've gone oh, a couple nice. of years and all, you know, you're down in LA and down uh-huh. in that, that area. And there's just tens of thousands of people in costume, literally. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and last year they took a picture of us uh-huh. and put it on TMZ. So when I got <laughs> home, I, I got a phone call from some friends saying, "Dude, you guys are on TMZ." And, like, <laughs> and it's not because you did something stupid. No, nah, not <laughs> this time, right? I said, "Yeah, hopefully I didn't do anything like that." But we were on there because of our characters, and it didn't show Pirates of Emerson, unfortunately, uh-huh. on the picture anywhere. But it was a picture of us, and it said, "For all of your colorful characters of WonderCon, click here." Oh, nice! You know, so it was on their website, it That's was on cool. the TV, and yeah. So I, it's some, you know, this. Uh, We've been on a lot of things like that. That was just a recent one, but that just uh, shows the the quality of our of our show, you know, and right. of our characters, and right down to the to the interactions with them, Scallywag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Now, do you actually perform in the in the haunt yourself? Um, I, I don't anymore. Yeah. And up until just like maybe four or five years ago, my mom even worked inside the haunted oh, house. How and great. She was a, a witch that slapped people in the butt with a broom. <laughs> People used to love it. I swear to you, it was weird because they would come in just to get. It was just like going to slap me with a broom, you yeah. know. So uh, we don't allow people to touch anymore, uh-huh. you know. But my mom is doing it. She owns a place. She can do whatever right. she wants, right? <laughs> yeah. So uh, no, now we're, it's a, it's gotten so big. Like I said, there's a on a busy night, you know, we'll have uh, twenty five hundred, three thousand people through sure. the door, and there's a lot going on. You got to yeah. run around and fix things and yeah. and help people and do it. So it's really hard for me to be in costume as well as security course, and, and yeah, you know yeah. so. so i mean with that many people and working with the public is always an adventure anyway but when you're spiking their adrenaline for money um there's got to be some strange things that happen what kind of what kind of things do you run into the, with the public that you probably wouldn't see at walmart or you uh, might yeah you might <laughs> Dude, i've seen those walmart pictures you know there's a lot of things going on there well you know some uh 
I don't know, we, we have weird things that happen every year. One terrible thing that happens every year is somebody always brings a stink bomb through, you know, that oh, just sucks, yeah, no. you know, they yeah. bust a stink bomb in there and uh-huh. it just ruins it for a minute. Um, we have a, we have a chain link fence and it's a maze strobe lights going on smoke so right. it's really hard sometimes to find your way out of there sure. and there'll be people that just get sick of it and just climb over <laughs> and climb over the fence so there's a, a one night I, I don't even know how many people did it before i realized it was done but they climbed over the fence so much that the fence just got crushed a six foot fence oh crushed down to three feet tall oh my gosh. from all the people just saying i'm out of here <laughs> or or the, all the people just following like sheep and following the people right. in front of them one or the other right that's you funny know? we have a uh so we have a good group of people that work down there, and it's I have maybe a, a, you no know, twenty half of my people, thirty people every year are uh-huh. returners from the year before. Sure. So I'm only having to refill half of the spots. You know, so right. a lot of people know what's going on, and I think that goes a, a, a lot to say a lot about our show too. That people come back to do it again, of course, and again. Yeah. You know, and yeah. It means it's a good time. You bet. I always tell them the first time you make somebody cry, you're going to feel so good about yourself. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. I, even, like I said, as a kid, we used to do that. We were the Halloween house on my block. And uh, so we would do that. And we would do that. We'd sit real still until somebody went, ooh, this 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 dummy looks real. Because we'd have dummies. Set oh, yeah, up, yeah. You know? And they'd always go, oh, this dummy looks really real. I was always dressed as a pirate, of course. And then you turn around and they just ah, go running down the street. And it's the greatest feeling. You still, you still love yeah. it, right? Well, you got to come down and work for us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if somebody did want to get involved with it, how, what's the process for doing that? Um, you can go and sign up on our, on our uh, website, um, piratesofemerson.com. And uh, you, you can check out all the information on our Facebook as well. But, but you sign up on our uh, on our website and uh-huh. then and first a uh, couple weekends of august we have a little get together a sign up time everybody comes in and then we have another sign up in september uh-huh. and then we have a meeting kind of show everybody how to be scary and do their thing right and then uh yeah and then you just come on in from there it's a it's about three hours a night three four nights a week um it's a obviously a, a lot of fun it's a very uh-huh. unique opportunity to meet a lot of unique uh, like-minded people, right? right? Yeah, you know, there are, you get a lot of people. We've, we've multiple people. I think there's at least four four people that have met there and have gotten married. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, great. got married. And not married at our haunt, but met yeah. each other at our haunt. How know, neat! So. How neat! Are you yeah. looking for people with some sort of specialized skill, or is it something well, that's that, always you know, a, that's yeah. always a bonus, right? Yeah. You got somebody who can come in and do something crazy. Uh-huh. You know, they have some girl that can walk, bend over backwards, and look like she's a. You got Satan in her, you know. That definitely. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Can you, you know, do the Exorcist walk? You know, we want you. We yeah. want it. You're in. You're in. There's no. Yeah, we we actually pretty much can find jobs for everybody. You know, the, the only thing is you got to be there. You got to show up. You right. Know? Sure. And, you start, you, you, and uh, we pay everybody. You, you make money down there. You uh-huh. make you know you make some good money. Just scaring people in the old days it used to be volunteers we used to have volunteer groups uh-huh. come in and we would donate money to their nonprofit organizations oh, okay. and yeah. that was so difficult every night you'd have a different group yeah different people right new costumes new makeups uh-huh. and just like oh it's tough you know? yeah so uh we've Noble, gotten but difficult of, yeah we, we've actually grown up a little bit so we, and once we were able to make some money we were able to start paying people and that helped us a lot that's really great that's yeah. that's very cool I'm, I'm picturing the uh the 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 workshop and how to scare people like something out of monsters inc the movie yeah where they're just like okay go uh, uh, yeah. uh, no, uh, I, uh. <laughs> did you say that but I, I swear i have a video of me and my crew doing that showing the new guys how to be scary uh-huh. and we did that same thing everybody hi little kid ah little big kid ah big little kid ah. <laughs> yeah it, it worked it worked that's hilarious yeah so i mean what kind of rules do you have for your performers outside of uh don't touch people now uh, do you, do you have rules for them? Are there other things they're not allowed? Oh, yeah, to do? there's a lot. There's a lot of things you get. You get a little booklet that comes along with it from everything. What what, what you need, we want you to wear down there? You know, no drinking on the uh-huh. job and things like that as well. Obviously, that goes without say with anything because you're dealing a lot with public. You know, you, they, sure. they need to be straight minded and be able to handle the situations. Oh yeah, but uh, um, yeah, there's there's like I said, the biggest thing is showing up on time. You know, that is our <laughs> biggest deal. You know, like I said. <laughs> Oftentimes we have people. Every, I mean, everybody's got another job. Everybody's got a real job, sure, you know. Yeah. So they're coming from work and coming from here. And yeah, it's just like me getting here today. The traffic was freaking crazy. So, yep. so it was tough, you know. And I, and I can feel that. But but the gates are open and it's seven oh five, you know. And if you don't get here at all seven fifteen and you don't have your costume and your makeup on and there's yep. already people going through the haunts, it's just tough. We we really really strive to let the the people the first people through the door. Uh-huh. We want. 
we want them to have a great show, but we want that last person to through the door to have the same show that that person sure. in the first did. You know, even yeah. though the, I know my guys are tired. <laughs> Three, four hours of scaring people with hard work, yeah, man. You know, they go home and they can't talk and they're sore uh-huh. and, and they all come back and do it the next day. I love them. I love you guys. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. That's that's fantastic. So yeah. uh, best place to keep track of it, piratesofemerson.com, right? Is, yeah, is and Facebook. There. You follow us on our Facebook a lot, too. We were, always, we were very active on our Facebook site. So Excellent, excellent. Yeah. So what do you do the rest of the year? Well, uh, we just promote and and go out and do fairs and festivals uh-huh. and parades. We actually uh, have a 50-foot pirate ship that we built on the back of a flatbed trailer. Neat. And it gets towed in all of our parades, and it, uh-huh. it's, uh, it's a sight to see. It's a spectacle for sure. We uh, last year had uh, a pirate group from, from Sacramento come down, Rogues of the Golden Coast, and uh-huh. they came down and shot a bunch of cannons off the top of it for us. And nice. that was a We got in some trouble for that. That's a whole... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently, we were supposed to get black powder permits and things yeah. for this, you know. So, what's yeah. <laughs> that saying? It's better to ask forgiveness. <laughs> sure. Yes. So, uh, so you were in Fremont originally. The Alameda Fairgrounds is actually in Pleasanton. And uh, at, w- was it difficult dealing with the city? Because I know here in Milpitas, it's impossible to get anything entertainment based uh, permitted or anything like that. How difficult was it working with those cities to get that going? It was difficult, but I'm not. I don't know that it was any more difficult than it was to get anything else going. You know, I'm yeah. going to say that because I know that everything is, is tough. Everything now is is, is you know permits and yeah. and you got to have it done. Everything from the the size of your your ramps. So if I'm if I got a every one foot of lift you have to have, or every one inch of lift you have to have one foot of ramp. Sure. Yeah. So if you have four feet up in the air, you have to yeah. have forty eight feet of ramp. You know. I mean, just <laughs> these are, but there's. Uh, so there's a lot of regulations and rules that you gotta yeah. follow, but you know what? They're there for a reason, and and we don't want anybody to get hurt. In of course, the yeah. on. So obviously, we we abide by everything that it, that they mm. ask us to, and um, we've even upgraded our fire system multiple times to mm. satisfy our fire department. And uh-huh. they do multiple trips through the hunt through the year. Um, we spray everything with fire retardant, uh-huh. and and um, actually, our dealings with the fire department in the city, we were dealing with this, the city fire here and the city inspectors and things, but being in the Pleasanton Fairgrounds, you're in, a, you're in county, right. which is county property. So we deal with county fire department. Okay. And county, not that they're any different, yeah. but, you know, but they, they are a little bit more lenient towards um, towards throwing fairs and festivals and things, sure. like you said. You know, it's not like just going out and doing it in the, in the streets. Not in a parking Fremont, lot. In yeah. a parking lot yeah. like we were, you know. So we're they're, they're ready for that kind of stuff. Right. You know, the hot tubs and... The good guys car show <laughs> and the Scottish games, they're there all the yeah. time, you know. So they they were ready f- for us and we were ready for them. You know, we've been dealing with the fire department for a long time up until uh-huh. then. So we everything is uh you know, whatever you want, sir. Yes, sir. Right. You know? yeah, and then yeah. you know, and we get it done. We get it done. Yeah, yeah. It's uh it's uh that's a, a big fairground. I'd imagine it's a little easier doing it on a fairgrounds than somewhere else because they're, they're set up for it. And all that kind it's of all stuff. all the, yeah. the parking is there and I mean even our last years in, in down here in Fremont, we even had to close the parking lot because there was so many cars coming in that right. I, I couldn't park them. And it, I mean, a terrible problem to have, right? You right. Know? But it's yeah. a really, it's it becomes a, an issue when you have a sure. parking lot full of cars that nobody can park and nobody can move and everybody's honking and upset. Yeah. And you're like, and it's, and it's Pirates of Emerson, you know, that is, yeah. that reflects on us. Sure. Yeah. I don't want people to have a, a, a this, this shit taste in their mouth and from the parking lot when yeah. they haven't even got into the hunt yet, you know? So yeah. it all reflects. It's all, we, we start our experience with the Pirates of Emerson right at the door. You know, we, you, you, you were going to buy tickets from, from costume characters and uh-huh. you're going to be greeted at the door with uh, costume characters and you're going to come in and you're going to be walking around through an atmosphere that's like a, I want to say like a nighttime renaissance fair. You okay, know, everything nice. is all lit up with colored lights and uh-huh. smoke, and there's lots of crazy characters walking around. Uh-huh. And stage entertainment, we have stage entertainment every night out there. Nice. Um, last year we did hundred dollar giveaways. Uh, you win hundred dollars every night. So some people came and uh-huh. went home with a hundred bucks, and yeah. I can't beat that, right? <laughs> Actually, here, here's a, a story. Last year, we we always find money. We find money every night after we clean up, and we're cleaning up the next oh, sure, day. Yeah. Everybody's dropping money. I mean, I can imagine what the concerts look like right after right. they're done. But yeah. so uh, there's a, a running tally of who gets the most money. And uh, last <laughs> year, I found a hundred dollar bill, and I and I got on the radio and said, "Hey, I got a hundred dollars." And my dad said, "Tell me it's a hundred dollar bill." 
And I said, why? And he's, I'll show you the email when you get in the office. And oh, I went, no. Yeah, I went in the office. There was a guy in there that said, I know this is going to be crazy, but yeah. I went to your haunted house last night, and I dropped a $100 bill. <laughs> And it was right out by the ticket booth, and oh man, my! So I, I called him up, gave him his hundred dollars back. He yeah. came down. He was obviously stoked. You yeah, know? oh yeah. Said you better go home, and write some cool stuff about me online. But right. go home, write <laughs> Pirates of Emerson, the best ever. Right. You know? I just so, want to know why he had taken a hundred dollars out of his pocket while in a haunted house. You know, the zombie stripper was there, and I just needed to tip her. See, yeah, those yeah. have been one dollar bills there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you must find like cell phones and all sorts oh, of every weird night. stuff. Yeah, every night. I, I I could probably fill this table with credit cards and driver's licenses. <laughs> I mean, I saved them from all the years. I never yeah. throw them out. And I actually, you know, some people come down and get them, and some people don't. And huh. now, now a lot of people have that, um, you know, the, the Find app or on your phone where you. Can oh yeah, it, right. And yeah, they can they can just walk in and say, "My phone is right over there." And yeah, you, go, you know, beautiful. We like that. Yeah, we like that. Turn that on if you have right. that app. That opportunity. makes it much easier. Much <laughs> yeah, easier. much yeah. easier. Looking around in the dark, you know, <laughs> we're going to tell you to come back tomorrow. <laughs> So to to whet the appetite of all the pirate fans listening, uh, describe to me a couple of the pirate scenes that you've got inside. Um, well, we have a, a a water scene every year that has a crazy waterfall. There's a, a bridge that you walk over top of. It's all smoked out with alligators, uh, animatronic alligators that move. And then you walk into a, a black light pirate ship that's okay. about 25, 30 feet long. And 15 feet tall, it's huge. You uh-huh. know, it's just really cool looking. And you, uh, that's what takes you on into the Pirates of Emerson, into Amazing. the event. Yeah. There's a jail scene inside there that's crazy. And we have people that are all um, being tortured and set up on the walls, you know, and they come over, come down from the ceilings at you and uh-huh. come from your feet. So they come from all different angles that you don't even know. Um, man, we have a, we have a really cool space. Spinning tunnel. It's a vortex tunnel. Oh, nice. That you walk through. And then if you're not familiar with them, people, you know, you walk through yeah. them and they got paint on them, black light paint, and it spins. And your your deck stays still, but uh-huh. the whole thing spins around you. Hard to walk through. Oh, yeah. You know, so. Oh, yeah. Those we, make me nauseous yeah, immediately. You know, yeah. I actually had to go and actually move the motor from the right side of the tunnel. I uh-huh. moved it over and put it on the left side of the tunnel because so many people were leaning on the on the right rail. It was bending. Uh-huh. So to fix it, we made the tunnel spin the other way and they leaned on the other rail, you know. That was an easy fix for us. It was good, though, man. It was really, really, uh, it, it's, a, it's a unique experience. You know, if you've never been out there, it's something worth taking a trip out. We have people come from a long ways to see it. And uh-huh. if you're into haunted houses, it, it's, one, it's one not to miss. For yeah, sure. this, it's definitely definitely worth the trip, for yes. sure. Yeah, this yeah, is, yeah, it's not some little scrub thing that's being you no. know, thrown up in a parking lot. No, no, yeah. no. We, yeah, no, we it's passed really, those. We passed those days. Yeah, no, it's, it's really, really impressive. Well, this is fantastic. So uh, piratesofemerson.com is the place to uh, keep up with everything. You can buy tickets and all that, plus the Facebook page. So I'll make sure to link up all that stuff on the show notes. And, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to go this year, too. Well, we'd love to have you. Yeah. Everything is uh, all included this year. Um, one thing, we sold our tickets through Costco last year, which was a real good thing for us. Um, uh-huh. And uh, you're going to be able to get tickets again through Costco. Great. Available. So that's where your best discounts are going to be is through your Costco's. It's worth going to Costco just go. to get a Pirates of Emerson ticket. Pirates of Emerson go. tickets and, and Polish sausages and uh, there you go. You can and go and have lunch. Large food lunch. items. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, great, Brian. Well, this has been super nice fun, you, man. Phil. Thank you, man. Uh, really, thank you for taking the time to do it. it was Thanks great. Thanks for having us out, man. Cheers. And there it is, friends. That is my interview with Brian Fields from Pirates of Emerson. If you want to find out more about their haunt and Brian and all the stuff they're doing, go to piratesofemerson.com. All spelled like it sounds. Uh, great stuff. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go this year. I'm gonna be scared, but I'm gonna go, and it'll be fun. Under the Crossbones is sponsored today by Pirate Radio of the Treasure Coast WKKC DB, playing the best music and pirate radio talk. You can listen to Under the Crossbones on both their stations. Just go to Pirate Radio of the Treasure Coast dot com or Pirate Radio TC dot com, and don't forget to download the apps Pirate Radio Treasure Coast for the music station and Pirate Radio Talk for the talk station. Uh, if you would like to give me a buzz, give me a call, and give me a, uh, a trip report, you've been to a festival, you've been to a pirate event, you want to tell me about it, if it's cool, I'll play it on the show. Just call this number, 408-599-2733. Again, that's 408 408- 599-2733 and you can leave me a voicemail telling me about your experience at the pirate festival or whatever pirate event you were at uh, or uh, tourist attraction or any of that kind of stuff and if it's cool I'll play it on the show let's do it up uh, did you fill out the survey yet if you haven't filled out the survey uh, it's very quick 
It's like seven questions. It'll take a minute, maybe. It's all easy stuff. There's no thinking or research involved. It's all easy stuff. What it does is it helps me find out who and who you are and what you're all about so that I know how to direct this show in the future as far as where to take it for live pods, stuff to talk about, all that kind of stuff. Very, very helpful to me. So if you could do that, Go to underthecrossbones.com slash survey. Literally take you one minute, and that would be very helpful to me. If you would like the Alexander Squenlin ebook, very simple. Go to underthecrossbones.com, click on the ebook button, and you'll get that for free. If you're out and about, go uh, take your phone, your little cell phone, your very expensive little computer in your pocket, and text the word pirate and your email address to 94253. Just text the word pirate and your email address to 94253. All right, and of course, that's uh, Buccaneers of America, Pirates of Panama by Alexander Squimlin. Great book from the golden age of piracy. You should definitely check it out. Okay, friends, that is our show for today. Thank you once again for tuning in. Again, you can find out more about Brian Fields and the Pirates of Emerson at piratesofemerson.com. Make sure you're subscribed to the show on iTunes or your favorite podcasting type place. And of course, you can get all the uh, show notes for this episode at underthecrossbones.com slash 081. You can see a picture of my pirate hat. Uh, you can hear the new single and see the lyric video. Uh, get more. I'll post some stuff from Pirates of Emerson. All kinds of stuff there. You should visit. All right. Until next week, I'll see you then. Bye.